cowboy movie called Shane with Alan Ladd. The only reason I know is because my football coach, Dana Wood, in the movie, he's leaving and there's a phrase where he's going, Shane, come back, Shane. So he'd always do that in football and um, yell that. You thought it was funny every time? Yeah, yep, I had to keep laughing. He's also the one that put me in detention for talking in study hall. Oh, boy. Oh, that's about oh, the only perk of my name is I don't get any yeah. jokes because nobody has my name. <laughs> yeah, no, no one has your name. Mine no. doesn't that come either. I don't, but yours is really not. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My name is the number one girl's name here at school. I've oh, really? I've never had a class where I wasn't the only Sarah. Okay. But I can yeah. though. Yeah. yeah. My best friend in high school was also named Sarah. She was Sarah with an H, so that's where we were Sarah. All on. Sarah with an H and Sarah without an H. I like it with no H. Do you? Yes, because it's kind of the same with mine. Like some people have H in there, yeah. Yeah. but I don't understand that. So. I, I think it was seventh grade. Yeah. <laughs> seventh or eighth grade, that school year, I spelled it with an H. Oh. Just to be. Different. Yeah, I, I just always liked it. And then um, the next year, I remember showing up to school and like, you know, we got like a week or two into school, and I was like, oh crap, <laughs> I had done it. That's so funny. I just went back to be. Without me. When I was little, my I wanted my name to be Summer, like so bad. To be what? Summer. Summer. Like okay. the season. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, that's me. And so, like when I was five and six, I would literally introduce myself as Summer. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because my oldest was five and a half when my youngest <laughs> was born. Okay. And my oldest really wanted to name her Zoe. Oh. And, but we had already decided on the name Lillian, so she's Lily. Okay. Lily's and, so cute. Yeah. yeah. But for like a good two or three months, Sophie, my oldest, would say, like, my little sister Zoe. Like, she just was going <laughs> to just call her Zoe. Oh. But it was that same age. You get like, yeah. There must be something about that age and a name that just. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You. I don't know. I was Allison. I really Allison. Wanted to be Allison. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. I know I told everyone, like, even at school. and kindergarten. I was like, yeah, my name's Summer. <laughs> I don't know why. Very cute. <laughs> is Kelly coming? I thought she said she was coming back. Maybe she is. She's on the phone. Oh, so. Okay. And Sherry Cutness talked to me and said she was going to be here tonight. So hopefully she comes. She's probably. I'd be happy. There are a lot of them. And there's a lot of people. There's a lot of them. Oh. Yeah, that old kitchen. So, um, all right. Well, in after talking about the team meeting, being on time, I will hold myself to those same standards, and we're gonna get started. Um, we're gonna to, yay! I was just saying, you said you're gonna be here. Um, so I wanted to, based on some coaching conversations that I've had recently, and I know we you know, a little bit in the, the mastermind today, but like the slower start to the year, and that can do things to our, our brains and our mindset. We talked about mindset last week. Thank you for letting me have my little pity party. Um, doing better now. <laughs> um, but it got me thinking about these myth understandings. Have you like listened or, or listened? looked at these before in MREA, it's the first part of MREA. And um, I thought we would just kind of to jump into these a little bit and you can, we can spend as much or as little time on each one depending on what grabs you. But before we do that, I can't tell who popped on. I did. Oh, you did. Um, what do you have on your minds? Anything that you want to talk about? Some of us were just in the mastermind, so we kind of already shared stuff like that. But the only thing I didn't yeah. mention in the oh, go ahead. No, no, Shannon, like, like as far as what? But then, well, like your yeah. business, what anything. Sometimes people have like a situation or a, or a you know something they want to situation run. Situation in real estate. Yeah, <laughs> you know, every once in a while, on yeah. rare occasions. Um, I should have said in a mastermind too, but I think like a golden letter session yeah. might be good too, like a Any workshop. Time. Because again, I only did it once, and then I was talking to Dean about his 
Because when I did it, I spent way too much money. I blasted a neighborhood, and it was neighborhood was kind of focused. But yeah, anyways, so I did maybe talk about that a little bit more. I did have some traction, and I kind of re, I recircled up, and I missed. I don't know if I missed an opportunity, but this guy said if I sold his rental property, he'd let me list it if I brought a buyer. So I was like, I had to have the buyer, then I could sell it, and then I could maybe sell his property in Apple Valley. And I talked with him again today, and he wants this extravagant number. I still can't get in the house. I'm like, well, my buyers are going to need to see the house. So I was like, fine. I just said, well, I'll have them drive by the outside, and I'll see where it goes from there. But so if I do this next batch, just I want to be a little bit more strategic because even talking with people, I've learned a lot. Absolutely, and I feel like the, the golden letters thing keeps coming up. It's obviously a topic that people are interested in, whether you're doing them and having success or you haven't done them yet or you're somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and my thought was, I think the same direction you're going when we were finishing up the mastermind and, and Olivia was asking about trainings, you or someone threw out Remind. Mm -hmm. And I do think that we need to do another Remind one. I was not able to attend the one that we just had. I was here for Jason's team meeting one. Um, but to really dive in and do more of a workshop. But I think these two should really go hand in hand. Because yeah. yeah. most of us, if we're going to even use Remind, the main thing we want to get is that information from Golden Letters. Yeah. You're chomping it. I, I am absolutely chomping it. I've got two questions. Jason did the training. Mm -hmm. But it was. When? OK, there's two things that, are, that, that I'm with you. And so I want to, this is 100% open because I want your feedback. Right? This process is more than an hour. So if I was to teach it, it's going to take more than an hour. If I teach it with Sarah as an example, because I think there's two parts to this class as well. How do I do it? Why do I do it? And then the technical, what are the actual things I do to it? Right? There, this is a mechanical process, the philosophy, and the scripts. I mean, there's. There's, there's also, I'm going to add to that. What happens when you start the getting phone calls? Right. What's so, the script yeah. for, right. for so handling the script that? On that? I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot packaged into this. That's not an hour of your time. I'd like to make it an hour of your time, and I did. I scrunched it all into an hour. And there's still questions. And there's the question of, when do you have the time okay. to do this? So that that's... I think where you're going right. is this what we spend the next several weeks focused on here on Wednesdays at two. I don't think that. I would say so because I think it's what everybody's going back to. I think right now with the weather, the way things are, how crazy the market is, that that's this has probably been the most utilized tool from what I like. I have I gatherings at my house where we sit and do them. I do have a question regarding it though. And this is something I have talked to John about when we were talking about certain things. There are such a large number of us doing these. Is there a way for, I mean, I could be out there because I am simple minded, like, yes, how do I know I'm not sending to someone else's area? How are we, or is there a way, I mean, if you want to participate, great or not, a, a graph or a target or an area where we can go and say, hey, I just want you all to know I sent out golden letters to this area. Because if we are, back, like I know three other, after having these conversations, someone's else like, I sent to that one too. Right? I sent one to an agent out of this office, I don't remember his name, in Bloomington. Right? So, <laughs> coordination, of, yes, coordination of some sort of effort because we all are super good. At, I love everybody here. We're really good, but I mean. None of us intentionally want to step on right. somebody else's toes. Yes, that's what I'm getting yeah. at, and vice versa of, Hey, I talked to them and then they got your letter and like, wait, they went with, well, wait, yeah. this is why I did the golden letters where we have a way to just dump a file of like, I sent out this this week in case, does that make sense to anybody or, okay. I just yeah. don't know if everyone will. Yeah, I don't think, that, I don't think <laughs> the expectation should be that you can't send a letter to that area. You legitimately have a buyer or you just want to send letters there. We can't stop that, but I see what you're saying. If, right. I'm, if, I, if my sole purpose in doing these golden letters is a buyer or I want to do business in a certain neighborhood, area, town, whatever, yeah. and you just sent letters to part of that, 
it wow. will shift or adjust what you well and then you like. know there's a better chance that yours is going to be the only letter that they get versus all you know there are three of us that are sending to the same apple valley neighborhood well that that defeats the purpose of sending the letter right, right? um so I, I hear what you're saying but i don't think that the, i don't think we could ever say right i sent no. letters here and you, you cannot right. i think that's just not the way more of a business FYI. works like an right. fyi yeah. exactly FYI, i've sent to the whole southern metro yes <laughs> shane has <laughs> done every <laughs> house <Just saying. laughs> fyi thanks jade yeah. okay no one can market to the south metro yeah. <laughs> i wonder no. if the like market center or i don't care i just make one just a Google form, or not a Google form, but like a Google sheet where you could just like a share, like yeah, Christina Meyer, Ridgefield neighborhood, yeah. June first, like you know, sent them out that day to this neighborhood, so people can go in there and just scroll through, like when's the last time they got one, or what neighborhoods have, and then it's like anything you put into anything. If someone looks great, they know because they really want to market and have the most result, get the most results for what they're doing. Something or you see that Christina sent that golden letter eight months ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll send one now because I have a buyer looking now. You right. know, yeah, that's a good idea. Wait, it's thinking. I mean, I'm always looking for. I always want this hour to be of value, and if this is what Mastermind said they wanted and you guys are saying you wanted and you're saying well when are you going to find the time well this is the time let's i i think yeah. we just do it that messes up my plan for next week <laughs> they'll pay a double for that yeah. yes please <laughs> zero times two is still um, zero still zero thanks <laughs> negative two <laughs> i'll pay the one can i throw something out quick to Jason and to Tati. Um, I just got the Fridley listing. Yay! That's awesome! <laughs> is, this the that one, is this the one that you had talked about where they didn't want to go on the market or whatever? Yay! So, You're so yeah. awesome. So to, to <laughs> fully lay it out and to say it, this ultimately is a golden letter result. Yes. <gasps> just Ooh. not her golden letter. Not my golden letter. Someone else in our office. And then there was kind of a snafu and I, John came to me and said, can you take care of this? And so I did, and I would really more of that. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, just make it simple and, and take out the names. Uh, yeah. The letter was sent out, an appointment was made, the appointment was kept, and the person was kind out. So keep your appointment is the message. Mm -hmm. wow. um, and Kelly happened to have a buyer, and the, per and the, the seller wanted to sell it off market, so Keller, Kelly had a buyer and brought the buyer out there. Ultimately, they decided the house wasn't for them. But you got out of the and even though they had a realtor that they were going to use, should this off market thing not work, it Yay, Kelly! Yay. Who wouldn't? Woo! Woo! That's awesome. <laughs> um, well, let's, okay, I'm trying to decide now. I want to shift and talk about the thing that I was going to do for next week because I think that that's really important. But let's just see about time. Um, we're going to dive into the, these myth understandings. And like I said, if something resonates, we can dive into it further. Um, <coughs> but really, after our mindset conversation last week, this, these are the things that started popping up in my head. And throughout the last couple of weeks with the coaching that I've done, both with my growth agents, but also my team, um, I think mindset's kind of a big deal right now. And I think that there are a lot of us, myself included, that have been struggling a little bit. Um, so, anyone have I'm already I can do it. I can do it. No, no, I just thought you could, if people wanted to follow along. Um, so here's, here's the first one. Go grab it. Thank you, Christina. Do you want me to grab mine too? Does someone else need it? Okay, the first one, the myth, I can't do it. I, I, I literally had agents recently say this to me. Very successful agents in this room. Anybody struggle with that right now? Start to see the myth. 
The myth is I can't do it. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were saying <laughs> the myth, and then you're, you know, confessing you can't do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I can't do it. I can't yeah. do this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what page is it? I'm on 49. Okay. That's not quite the start, but it's the first misunderstanding. I can't do it. So real quick, the truth is that until you try, you couldn't possibly know what you can or can't do. And so when it comes to bold letters, when it comes to just putting yourself out there and growing your business, I guarantee every single one of you can do it. And I know I was so fucking many days on you, but you can think um, okay. it's, it's easy, I think, when things are hard, when the business isn't coming quite as readily, it isn't falling in our laps, it's easy to be like, I can't do this. And, and really, what does that, what, what are you truly feeling? I have to work at it. Yes, I don't want to. I don't want to do all this lead gen. I don't want to do all of this work. That's really what this is. And the truth is, until you've tried different ways, until you've gotten consistency, um, you don't know if you can do it or not. And there are going to be versions of lead gen that aren't your thing. And that's okay. So you have to try until you find the handful that are are your thing and that you don't hate doing and maybe even enjoy doing and then it becomes about that consistency which i think is going to come up a little bit later any other thoughts on this one two thoughts i guarantee you there's no one in this building who hears i can't do it more than me I guarantee it and it is not unique it is across the board yeah. somebody approached me this morning say i can't do it hey i understand and what, one of the things I really, really try to focus on, and I think you just hit the one of the things you nail on that, some things are for you and some things aren't. It doesn't matter. Whoever you are, no matter what you do, some things are for you and some things aren't. I get it. Some things aren't for you. That's fine. Right? Um, but I'm a big believer and I can't do it yet. Yes. And that changes the game completely. I can't do it yet. And it actually answers this, right? I can't do it yet. Do I want to? Because if I do, it's time for me to change the game. I can't do it yet, and I don't want to do it. Like, I'll be honest with you. I can't run a half marathon. Can't. I went up a hill, I ran up a hill, and I turned around and went back inside my house and said, I don't want to either. <laughs> right? And that's okay. That is that's okay. That's not me. That is okay. And the thing is, when it comes to the I can't or I don't want to and the yet piece, I'll tell you when I was very first licensed in PC and um, being told to do all these phone calls, call your sphere, go through your phone, call everybody, call everybody, sit for three hours in your office and make all of these phone calls every day. And I was, I did it. I tried to do it. I was really not good at it. Could I have kept working at it and forcing myself to do it and I would have gotten better? For sure. I, I do believe that. But ultimately, I didn't want to do that. So instead, I started hosting open houses and door knocking and texting people and setting up coffee dates. And all of a sudden, the business was coming in and I didn't pick up the phone, period. Unless I was like calling a client about something. But as far as lead gen went, I almost never lead gen on the phone. We found a different way. I found different ways. And so that's the thing. Is, is Jason going to run a half marathon? No, he doesn't want to. But should he be doing something else, maybe like going for a walk with your wife or something that it's, you can't say, I don't want to, I can't do this, I don't want to. And real estate obviously isn't for me if you haven't actually tried all of those different things. Some people do open houses and they hate them. And don't do open houses. If you're not getting business from them, don't do them. Save yourself time on the weekend. But what else are you going to do instead? That's the, the question, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this one that made me think of a conversation from last week. It can't be done in my market. <laughs> so last week, Jason brought up a company down in Phoenix called 72 Soul. Have you ever heard of them? Have you heard they, of them? They run them every like it's, five minutes on the And TV. the billboards are yeah. everywhere. And it's so funny because I have spent a fair amount of time in Phoenix in the last year. And um, it's everywhere. And I, I knew it was some gimmicky real estate thing, but I didn't know what until you came in and, and talked about it last week. 
And when he was talking about it, I was thinking, I mean, that's not going to go over very well in, in our market. And then I was at a listing appointment on Friday and the guy said to me, you know, we really do want to sell. We need to downsize. Um, I just, the thought of people tramping through my home all weekend is just really, really um, overwhelming to me. And where will we go? And what will we do with our little dog? And I said, well, here's a crazy idea. We could do this thing that works down in Phoenix. We do one weekend or one, one open house, maybe noon to three on a Saturday. We say offers are due by Sunday. He's like, I love it. Let's do that. So we'll see. Um, yeah, we'll see. And they do <laughs> like coming soon for a period of like a week or so before, right? They, and and you this. need to obviously, it, it, because it's new, to, this yeah. is not done in this market, making it very clear to agents that we're going to get as many people through in this short time frame as possible. And they may change their mind. I have no idea, but it was really interesting on the heels of coaching last week to have this idea. And they were like, that's brilliant. Why doesn't everybody do that? Well, and, and maybe okay. they will. They're okay with like, because the expectation I'm guessing, like we talked about, is that you got to make this house pretty pristine since yes. it's a, you know, you can't just like have boxes, no. you know, whatever. But, uh, but you're just, it's got, you got to set mind, the expectation. Most of your sellers are going to have to do that anyway, yeah. come up and maintain. Yes. yes. Right. There's no maintain here. There's just one shot yep. in, out, done, and it really, it does change the game for Sarah, where, I mean, there's going to be so much more marketing up front to push, but the idea is to push. And you Everybody have to be in. comfortable with agents yelling at you yep. because they're angry that they can't get there between noon and three or whatever. And so now, annoying. now you now and who was it? I don't remember who it was last week that said, you know, well, what about the agent that says, well, you're doing your seller a disservice because I can't bring my buyer through. You're going to have to be okay with, with pissing agents off because in this market, that's not the expectation, but it doesn't mean that it's not worth a try. If that's what my sellers are literally saying to me, they want. Right. Yeah, I, so saw that, yeah. I saw that on a listing um, last week. I think it, I think they had two two days of open house for several hours yeah each. and i was thinking to do one more day, than the two, two but mm -hmm. that guy does and you know make it but then they can go to lunch and then go over to their daughter's house with their dog for a little while mm -hmm. and then come home and they've got their saturday evening and they don't have to be out of the house on sunday i also said this goes to the mastermind conversation too we need to price it to get as many people to make that time frame work and, and, and get multiple offers. But if you say these are the three hours that you can come through and we only get four people through and nobody writes and that like, then we, we haven't. We Out of curiosity, if, have any of you worked on an auction sale? If you, if you do an auction same. sale, does the other agents call up and say, well, I don't like the time you're having an auction? Yeah. I mean, essentially that's what you're doing. Well, it's like calling target saying, and that was business hours. I was gonna say the exact same yeah. thing. Yeah. And as far as educating, I mean, to your sellers, you're doing your disservice to your sellers. My sellers are completely aware. As an agent, I'm experienced enough. We sat down and had discussions. Yes. Yeah. So yep. I've set expectations. We've talked through the pros and cons. And this, this is at my seller's direction. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what? If you get 50 people through, 20 people through that open house, and you get more than one offer, you haven't done your seller a disservice. You've done more than they were even expecting. Let me know if you want me to make cheesecake. Can you tell you a funny story about that one? Yeah. So retail sales is admittedly different. And retail sales people, though, however, are paid on commission. And they typically, depending on where you are, especially in the electronics business, are paid to sell extended warranties. And uh, if you've ever heard about that or talked about it or been in one of those places, you know they try to sell to you. Um, it can't be done in my market in a retail environment. Is it can't be done in this store, right? Because there's stores all over the country. It can't be done here. But that other store that's doing really well with this, that's just their neighborhood. So I actually ran an exercise with my team one time, and I gave them all a piece of paper, and I asked them to write down all of the types of people in this market who won't buy an extended warranty. So I found out that farmers don't buy extended warranties because they don't have enough. 
And then I found out that poor people don't buy them because they don't have enough money. And I found out that rich people don't buy them because they don't have enough money. And firefighters don't buy them because they break stuff all the time and they're used to replacing it. And every possible thing under the sun, by the time it was done, I wrote on the board and I said, who's left to sell this to? And pretty much everybody goes, well, nobody. And yet we sold some last month. So all of you are liars, <laughs> right? I mean, at the end of the day, this is our own defense mechanism yes. for letting ourselves off the hook. Right. And, and I mean, it, it, there are times it feels good. And here's the thing that, that stuck out. I was going back through and rereading all of my highlights before I came in today. And this was the, my, my biggest takeaway for this. It can't be done in, in my market. If you believe and your competition does not, there's less of an obstacle between you and your goals. So what if this seller of mine says, we just really don't want to be gone all weekend. We have nowhere to go. What would we do? Okay, we're going to do this open house and it works. Now they're telling their neighbor who's also thinking about selling, and this is a true story. Hey, she sold our house in three hours on a Saturday, and then we were home the rest of the weekend. And what if he likes that idea and calls me? Who else right? is going to, who else is singing that song? Right. But for the agents that are like, well, we can't do that. We can't do that. That's not the way it works here. There are clearly a, a lot of people that would like the idea of not being kicked out of their house for an entire weekend. And we know that's what happens right now is you do coming soon. And then you have showings from 8 a.m. on Friday to 7 p.m. on Sunday. And there's not a break other than to go home and crawl into bed. And a lot of people are super inconvenienced by that. They have young kids. They have pets. They maybe don't have a place to go. They don't want to. So it's it's really the other thing it says here is if, there, if it works in another market, it can be done in yours. It's just a matter of finding out how it can be possible. And it means prepping your sellers and doing the marketing ahead of time. But I'm it was crazy the conversation last Wednesday and that appointment on Friday. So I'll let you know if you do it. To be, uh, probably mid to late May. Yeah, they're, they're trying to coordinate with the wedding. And there's yeah, some moving parts. But, um, okay, third. Ready to move on? It would take too much time and effort. I would lose my freedom. So this could be anything. But it, it would take too much time and effort, and I would lose my freedom. Lots. Well, you're in control. You gain more freedom by putting in a shot. Right? If you're doing things correctly, you actually gain more freedom. The key to success at this point is not to apply more time or effort to the equation, but to think of time and effort differently. Time and effort are not the deciding factors in success. The first thing I think about that when you when you say that is you know, like if someone is thinking, oh, I don't have the time to dedicate to doing career visioning and hiring an admin and that sort of thing. And, or it's too risky. I've even heard agents say like, well, people don't want to go. Right, that. right. People don't want to yeah. do that. And of all the things that, the wonderful things Tati has done for me in the year that she's been here, the most thankful thing that I, the thing I'm probably most thankful for is my time how much i mean jason could say i'm not constantly you know working from the time i open my eyes to the time i close my eyes at night i've gotten so much more time back to rest and relax to spend with family to get the weekends back you know that sort of thing so and career originally helped you find somebody who's just who was dedicated perfect. to your business as well mm -hmm. yeah yes Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I think having that time back makes you a better agent. It does, totally. For sure. Oh, I, I mean, you know, yeah, Jason saw me. I was like at my wit's end going, okay, maybe I can be a Walmart greeter. Yeah. Because, you know, you get to that point where you're like, what else can I do? This, I, I can't do this anymore. Think, think of all the ladies you might be at a fall. <laughs> right. Oh, I, <laughs> I never <laughs> thought don't, about that. Don't, don't slash him. <laughs> <you. laughs> Welcome to Walmart. Here's my business. <laughs> I remember when I first started, I think I like straight up told Kelly, I was like, how did you do this? <laughs> because she's like, I don't want to brag or, you know, we didn't make it want to make it sound like, like she you know, yeah. was doing all this work, but she's like, 
how did you do what you're doing and what I'm doing? Like, and I was like, I'm doing so much and you're doing so much. Yeah. And I was just like, how did you do this? I don't know how she did it, but she did. Well, I guarantee you, sorry, Kelly, mm -hmm. it's being done better now. And that's right. just the way right. it is. Because when you're on your own and you're trying to, the, the consistency piece, you might have the ideas, you might even have the wherewithal to do it. It's the, the ability to do it consistently, which is what it takes in this business, is the thing that falls apart. And now you get to come in, or you did come in, and you created those systems and things do get done consistently, and that makes a huge difference. I have a mind that you get the opportunity to perhaps leverage a different set of skills. Yes, that exactly. You don't have natively. Yep. Um, you know, uh, there are things that I am apparently good at, like technology, um, but there are things that I am not good at, and knowing that there could be somebody who could handle that stuff, that's amazing to have that stuff taken off your plate. Like, so, again, back to Tati, like if we have like a client event or something, she's like, oh, I love doing this. And she's making these little bags with these ribbons and I'm like, barf. <laughs> that is not or me. Stacy will be like, okay, we need to get the invitations out eight weeks before and we need to do the reminder of this. And I'm like, oh, like 24 hours before and you're not like, oh, hey, totally forgot. I like that's I just did so fly by the seat of my pants and she it's very methodical in how things get done. And guess what? Since she's come on, our, our client events have been very well attended because people had plenty of time to get them on their calendar. Yeah. And, yeah. I remember when Tati said she was going to start a newsletter and I'm like, she was like, how about we have a drawing for, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'll pay for it. You, you take care of everything else. And she's like, oh yeah, I love that. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there's little myths and truths within this one. I'm not going to share all of them with you, but the one that, that stands out to me is activity needs productivity. That's the myth. <laughs> he laughs because We've all done it, especially as new agents, right? Oh, I'm going to design my business card. Oh, I'm going to design my open house things. Oh, I'm going to design this. And the truth is you can be very active without being productive. Like designing an open house flyer doesn't bring you any business. Posting the open house does. Door knocking does. <coughs> Posting that on Facebook might. But all of the time I know that I wanted to spend on um, making things look pretty or looking busy didn't actually bring me a lick of business. Okay. okay, this is, I think, the biggest one for people right now. Um, it's too risky, I'll lose money. <coughs> As a growth coach, I'm often talking about the next step in business in your respective businesses, which might be creating a full 36 touch and systemizing it as much as possible. Maybe it's hiring your next or an admin. Um, maybe it's, you know, bringing on a buyer's agent, whatever the next step for you might be. And so often I just hear, well, I can't hire an admin. I can't afford to hire an admin. And the truth is for everyone sitting in here for where you want your businesses to be, that is something that needs to be on your radar, period. And Kelly and I, Shane, you too, like having that person that can take the administrative things off your plate and do them well is a game changer in where your business can, can go. Um, it's scary, probably one of the scariest decisions I ever made, and I just did it again, hiring a second one. And I'm still scared, that was, that was a part of my like, panic attack last week. Um, it's terrifying, but I know that I'm trusting the process and I'm trusting the models and I know that it's gonna continue, we're gonna continue to grow because of it. Um, like I look at you, you think I'm making up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what she gets for doing one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. <laughs> um, but that that's the next step for you. It's scary. But that's it the next so step. Scary. And as I've been saying, I just feel like this year isn't as good as last year so far. So that makes me even more scary. Yes, and but do you know when you were talking in um in coaching and you were just sharing some of this the mindset stuff that you've been dealing with, and the thing that was going through my head is you have built this business, and I bet if you had an admin, and I'll help you come up with a plan to get there, but if you had an admin, 
so much of what you're worried about would get taken care of. Because a big piece of it for any individual agent is that knowing that your your clients, your sphere is hearing from you on a regular basis. And as your business grows, your client base grows, your sphere grows, it's impossible to do that as often as it needs to be done. So I, I think that part of it's the market and part of it is you've grown and you're, you've hit a ceiling and you need to make a change to bust through that. And you and I will handle that one at one, but that's the next step. <laughs> I'll just say, because I got to watch it, you know, from a safe distance. It was risky. It is risky. And I, I tell this story a lot when I talk about why I work here now and why I don't work at Verizon. Um, I made a lot of money working at Verizon. I provided a lot of great things, a lot of neat stuff, ran a fairly solid life for our family over time. Um, however, when I left, one phrase that kept playing over in my mind was if I'm going to bet on somebody, I'm going to bet on me. And if you say it's too risky, I don't know anybody in here who I think can't do it. You know, I mean, I've, I've worked, I've hired literally thousands of human beings. A pretty good idea of what people do, can do, and can't do based on that database in my head. And you're fooling yourself if you think you can't do it. It is risky. And if you're going to put your money, your effort in something, put it on you. Make the bet on yourself. Because that's the right person to bet on. Everybody else can go any number of directions. But bet on you. Because you're the only one who can control you. God knows we have difficulty with that sometimes, or anyway. But bet on yourself. That's where you want to place the risk, not on somebody else. And a part of that betting on yourself is the trusting yourself to make the right decisions for what's next in your business and in your growth. And sometimes that means that you're hiring somebody. So it's not you doing it anymore, and that's right. this next myth. It's not you doing it anymore, but that you've trusted yourself that you're gonna you're going to make this move, hire this person or bring on this agent, whatever that next step is, that's going to help you continue to grow. Because for any individual agent, and this is what Jason was talking about last week with the lines and the, you know, I'll do a mini version, a quick version, but he had, you know, your growth, you up and down, and then you hit this point and you're either gonna break through or you're gonna burn out. This is where individual agents, when you're to the point where you're going to, you need a hire, you need to make a hire, that means you're right here. And this is when everyone's like, well, I can't afford it. I can't afford a hire. I can't afford that next step. But what's going to happen is you get burnt out because you can't do it all. So that's trying. better than yourself too. God bless. You are trying. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> or the you other are. thing is you either burn out or you cannot provide the level of service that you want to. And, and that's where I was at. I had a couple of clients who were upset with me and I am such a people pleaser yeah. that that it's really hard. Spurred it was what that heard some action. It was the worst thing I've ever been through. I mean, I've, you know, just knowing people were upset with me um, was, yeah, I'm like, I, I can't. And that is the, the turning point. I remember us sitting in the living room. That was a turning point. I was in tears where it wasn't, should I hire an admin? It's like, you know, and he's like, you have not had a day off. You have not had any time to yourself, work all day, every day. And that's when it came, it switched from, should I, or when should I, to, I have to do this. But don't, you don't have to get to that. Yeah, it's, please don't. The, the goal <laughs> is that you, you get, you, you, you reckon you see that coming and you you do it before you're to that point but i think for a lot of us because we are people pleasers because we are, i know for i speak for myself i like to have control hiring someone felt like i was losing that control when you hire the right person now i'm like i'm just like that with you too like stacy has an idea and i'm like fantastic go do it 
you know, like I don't care as long as just I know she'll get it done. Um, you want to have that match the career visioning process that helps you find hopefully that person. We'll talk all about the hiring and stuff. I teach that class every once in a while. Um, okay, this next one. I think this next one's a big one. It's whether you're an individual agent or you're growing a team. The myth, and I struggle with this, like right now today. My clients will only work with me. <laughs> only I can deliver that quality of service. Anybody else have that thought? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's kind of part of the control thing, too. Yep. And I don't, I'm not necessarily afraid, like if I have another agent on my team, that they can't handle it. I'm afraid it's going to look like I'm passing somebody off. That's yeah. exactly my yeah. struggle. Yeah. Well, if it's a past client, if it's like a referral or somebody new, then it's fine. Zero problem. But if it's, you know, somebody who I sold their house to them two years ago and now they want me to sell it or, you know, help them buy a new place, I feel like I'm. Well, and like just, I don't have time. For and if anything work. does go sideways, my biggest two of my hugest things in life for me are integrity, mm -hmm. like who I am, like I'm transparency, like this is good as it gets. But when stuff goes sideways and someone else handles it, then it's a reflection on you. I mean, and that for me is like, I'll just do it because I just and but then we're back to the, the that keeping up. Right, but right. that's my thought yeah, No, I know, I agree with you. I'm right there. So this is the truth. The myth was, oh, my clients will only work with me. The truth is your clients aren't loyal to you. They're loyal to the standards you represent. So hiring an admin, you know, obviously that allows you to work with more clients. But I know for me, my admins are in touch with my clients. They are the ones that are kind of moving the transaction along. Is that how you guys do things? So that was that piece of control that I handled, I handed off. And there was a part of me that thought, well, will my, my clients feel like I abandoned them? And I'm obviously I'm checking in. I'm the one that is letting them know if there's any concerns that arise or things like that. But Stacy is the one who is telling them every step of the way what the next step is. And it's, I mean, now that we have that process down, oh, I don't have to think about it anymore because I know that they're being reminded. I know it's getting taken care of. Um, but it's those standards. I feel like when you bring help on, whether it's an admin or you're bringing on agents, those standards actually can go up. So I have two agents on my team, and I do trust them. It's hard for me to hand a buyer off for that exact reason that Kelly was saying. I don't want my clients to feel like they're being just, you know, shoved aside. At the same time, and this is what I'm slowly learning to do, is talk about the benefits of having them work with Kim or Marquez. Marquez can get you into that home the moment you want to see it. You know, he's, and I don't say he's got nothing else going on, which is not true. <laughs> but he, that's what he's there for, right? He's hungry for it, and he's going, versus me, where I'm in leadership in ALC, and I've got listing appointments, and I can't always drop everything, especially in a market like this. So I'm finding more and more that when I set it up as this is a benefit to working with my team, people are okay with it, but that is a, this one's still a big work in progress for me. But it is about the standards. That's that's why they came back to you. And as long as those standards are still met, your clients will be okay with that. Two things I remember really John talking with John uh, in a previous mm -hmm. team meeting, and John saying when he brought on his first person, he was a he was a bit of a bear. It was the term he used. He was not particularly, you know, this is how it's done, this is how it's done, this is how it's done. I'm not allowing that person to have the freedom to be themselves and trusting that you'd make the right decision with that person. So that's, that, that is absolutely hard. Um, and as a person who has run large teams of upwards of 80 to 100 people, it is a constant concern, um, to be fair, you know, that, that, you know, if I have a friend to come in and I'm like, all right, which age, what, what have we got here today? And you look them over and you, it's going to be this one, right? Um, but realistically, if I've done my job right, then all of them can provide that level of service, right? And sometimes there's personality issues. You might want to monitor, and some folks might be a better fit for other folks and things like that. That's perfectly fine. But the other thing I found, and, and I mean, I, I, 
I'd be curious to see your opinion on this, Sarah, but even if they ran 80% of the action activity work process, if you were available some portion of that time, you're still there, you're still in the client process, they're taking a lion's share of the work, which then frees you up to do other things, even if you're not taking them on every single showing or every single item, doesn't mean that the person is there and now you're gone. Right. You don't just disappear from the process. You're just leveraging the parts of it and being part of the process that, that you want to be part of and, and things that you can be part of and giving them the opportunity to run the ball with other parts of it. And truly treating it as a team atmosphere rather than there are just two, there's me and this other individual. And I know you, you, you yeah. said hello, but I have this other individual and you will only ever see other individual going forward. That, that probably isn't going to be successful. That's my thought. I think it depends on the situation. So for instance, we got a referral from a lender and you know, I didn't know these people. I know the lender well. I don't know these people that he referred, but because he gave them my name and number, they called me, but I brought Marquez in for the buyer. We both did that together. And I kind of set it up like that, like, hey, you get both of us. Marquez showed them every house. Marquez wrote up the, the offer. He negotiated. He did all of that. But I was on every text. And when they got the house, woohoo! You know, I was there to like cheer them on, but he did everything. And they didn't know the difference. They didn't, they didn't know. Now, if it were a good friend of mine, and this is where I struggle, if it's someone that I, I know. I have a harder time handing them off. And if I did, like there have been times you know, when I'm out of town and I'll have Kim or Marquez show houses, but I have and I'll pay them per door, but I'm still the one writing up that offer. I think I do need to, and Olivia is encouraging me to go to the next step where I she's like, you shouldn't be showing houses. Um, so completely handing them off. But I would never be able to be like, you know. Bye. I would definitely want to be checking in and letting them know that I'm still here and a part of the process. And I think I, that, that Kim and Kim or Marquez is is really doing the bulk of the work. And I think a huge part of that is like you're talking about these clients that were referred by the lender, just setting that expectation and just act like it's normal. Yeah. You know, and not you going. I know you referred to me, but are you okay? If, you know, and just go, you know, the way our team works or whatever, and just like, it's you know nothing. And this is, you made me think of this as you were talking, but when we were ready to buy the house last summer and I got Kenny Klaus's name and phone number, I'm assuming most of you know who he is. He's like one of the top KW agents in the company. And so like, she's like, here, text Kenny. Like, oh my. <laughs> but I did. And he wrote me back and he said, you know, do you have time for a quick phone call? I'm like, sure. So we hop on the phone and I bet I talked to him for two minutes, but he was like, where are you looking? I said, I don't know, Mesa, Phoenix, somewhere in there. Great, I'm gonna give you to Angela. She's gonna be reaching out. She's one of our best. Have a great day. And never talked or heard from him again. Angela became like my best Phoenix friend. So, but it was so, it didn't even occur. I mean, never thought I'd work with. Kenny. Right. But he, it wasn't a hmm. It was a here. Okay, great. I'm going to have Angela reach out to you. And that's just what happens. And I didn't think anything of it. And granted, I know the business, but your clients won't either because they don't know. And I think the other thing is to remember you have discretion. Is it 1090? Yeah. Is it 95.5? Where are you at in this? And there's a whole scale in between of how interaction. That one, 95.5, uh, almost zero time, maybe even 98.2, yep. <laughs> you know? Yep. Um, and and that, that's okay. And you get to judge. Well, you get to decide in the process. Especially as you're bringing on a new agent, I think it probably would be more in the, you know, yeah, and you work your way here. Because you if you want to set that standard, right? If that's what your clients are loyal to is the standard that you or your team provide, then you better make sure that your agents are living up to that standard. And that means that they're shadowing you, they're learning from you. So those first few buyers might be at 1090, 2080, 50, 50. And then once you know they've got it, then you can step back even more. And they, your agents, 
want that too. They want to know that that they're hitting that level of excellence. I got to be honest with you. I sat with Kelly. We did buyer presentation. She did one, and she did another one, then I did one. And yeah, I wanted her there. I don't want to. Oh. Yeah. I mean, this is my first time saying these words for real. Mm -hmm. I want somebody to go, no, you completely screwed those words up. Those are not the right words before it was a problem, yeah. right? I don't want it to be a problem later on down the road. I want right now, let's fix it before we, and it never happened, but you know. Yeah, but even, yeah, it's like that security blanket. Yeah. You know that, that she's there and she yeah. can. You know, you want dad holding the back of the, uh, of the bike as you're pedaling away, yeah. right? And it's only a long while later that you realize he's let go out miles <laughs> back, right? I mean, that's what you want though. That's exactly right. Yeah. You want that there. All right, this is another one. These last two were the ones that I, I, I was most excited to kind of talk about. But this is the sixth one. So we did it. We got them all done. Bingo. Having a goal and not fully realizing it is a negative thing. That's the myth. Having a goal and not fully realizing it is a negative thing. I, I am deciding if I'm going to be super vulnerable with you or not, but I will be. <laughs> um, part of my pity party last Wednesday, and my pity party went all the way into my coaching session with Olivia on Thursday, where I had a full on breakdown in the room back there. And that is not me. That's not who I <laughs> like to be. And I'm going to tell you why. And it's really shitty. When my team came in sixth, I wanted to be in the top five. That was my goal. And we came in number six. What a rat, you guys. That's what I'm complaining about. And when I said the word, I didn't say it to you guys last week, but I said it to Olivia and broke down crying and it was awful. And she, was so sweet, but she was like, you know, what, what were you last year? What was your team? And we were number 10 last year. And I was so excited to be number 10 as a brand new team in the top 10. I was so proud of that. And she said, what? You're not even letting yourself enjoy the growth that you had in the last year. And she's like, that's so sad. And we talked and I decided I'm going to I do need to celebrate that. And I went back to my office and I saw my little number 10 and I was like, why wouldn't I be proud of where we landed and, and what we're doing? But because it wasn't my goal, I, I did not enjoy our ceremony on Wednesday. I was really upset. I was working really, really hard to keep a smile on my face for my team and the other people sitting at my table. And I don't, yeah. I just wanted to be really open with you about this one is the one that hit home the most as I was looking through these and thinking about our conversation last week and that's really what was going on in my head. That's um, super funny because the reason I didn't go is because I put a goal of 40 transactions on my head and I had no idea I won anything. So sorry, that was, but I had to back down and I said my training or my coaching with Olivia in tears, like I cannot put that number on my head. I thought I could, two months ago, but now I, I I have to step back and go, this goal is not as important as my sanity and making good decisions and being successful. That number has to go away. And that was why I didn't go, because I'm like, okay, now I'm at this point, I'm gonna fail. And I took it off the table. I have no aspirations to sell forecasts this year. And you're totally right that your mind, your your it's mental health comes first. You those goals I mean, I mean but i think that there's thinking about them differently and this is this was the shift that i had to have is thinking about those goals as what you're striving for i always think about gary keller saying and i don't remember his exact words but you should set a goal that's high because even if you don't get there you'll get farther than if you set a reasonable goal you're going to push yourself he, he he talks about how for every goal as you get close to it, you're going to slow down. And a lot of times that means that we might fall short. But if you if you set a reasonable goal and you reach it versus you set a high goal and you don't quite get there, you've almost certainly done more than you would have otherwise. So goals aren't a bad thing, no. but I think it's the way that we frame them. Right. That 
Yes. Yeah. And what she what she said to me, and I'm assuming very similar to what she said to you, was as high achievers, it's really hard to let go of those goals. And um, and I I had to really think about the fact that. Like my team, we grew 40% in production from 2020 to 2021. And I was going to not be happy about that. I was going to sit in that conference room and cry. I did <laughs> sit in that conference room and cry. And when I think about it, when I say it out loud to you guys, I sound like I feel like. No, I th I'm glad you shared it because I'm not sure a lot of us have felt like that before. Yeah. Well, every one of us in here is a high achiever. That's why we're good at what we do. And but it's it is it's framing that goal as the thing that we're working towards and we're going to land where we land it's having a goal of 40 and stressing out and freezing and burning out and then not even doing anything like that's not going to get you closer to that goal um oh i just want to share something because i've been working on this with jason in my four ones but i think Personally, for me growing up, I think I had a skewed view or vision of what a goal is because one, my parents are very, if you say you're going to do something, you're going to do it. And I grew up in gymnastics and a goal was not a goal. It was, that's what you said you're going to do. So if you didn't hit your goal, you did fail and they will tell you that you did. And so my view on a goal is, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Anything over that is like, that's the overachieving part, not the hitting your goal. <clears throat> and so I've been working with Jason and one of the things that he's told me, he's like, a goal is a goal. It's a goal. And I'm like, no, my goal is what I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, that like, is such a good mindset because I've never, that is exactly it. Yeah. And so he's helped me realize that, okay, you can have goals and goals are good, but a goal is a goal. So if you... I don't want to say don't fall short there, of yeah. that, but if you don't hit your goal, it's okay. And so yesterday I had a, a moment where I was like, okay, Tati, I think you're growing because <laughs> <laughs> we were, were working on our database and really cleaning it up and getting our farm people in there put together. And I told Kelly, I was like, okay, my goal today is to get to 140 contacts. And I had to voice that so that I would get there. And I, it was like 4.45 and I leave at five. And I was like, came at 127. She's like, okay, that's good. That's a goal. And in my head, I'm like, but what is it? The goal. Okay. The goal. <laughs> and I was like, well, I could stay and finish, but I have a Timberwolves game. I want to go to it. Don't want to be late. And so I think I stopped at 131 and I was like, Okay, Toddy, it's okay. Everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> yep. So, but yeah, I mean, a goal is a goal. It's not like you're. It's something point. that you are working towards. Yeah. And Jason wrote down the word perfectionist, and I, I, I know there are. I have a lot of these tendencies. My husband does too. Um, I think a lot of us in this room probably do. But the thing with a perfectionist, if you're anything like me is the moment that I realize that I'm not going to reach the goal, doesn't matter where I am in the process, right? The moment that I know I'm not going to get there, I'm like, well, screw that. I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, I'm not going to make it anyway. Yeah. I'm not gonna make it anyway. Anybody so, else? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what Tani said about if you say you're going to do it like that, you're going to do that. That's the mentality of the old school. Like you said you're going to do it. That's what you need to do. Yeah. Instead of the terminology of goal, that's to me that's the definition of it. And I think I'm the opposite from that. When I say there's a goal, instead of saying like, okay, screw it, I'm not gonna do it, mine's like, okay, I'm gonna push every single yeah. other thing out of the way yeah. because this is it. what I'm gonna yeah. do. Which is not healthy. That <laughs> <laughs> is super healthy. Yeah. So we just run contests in retail, right? We don't move, we don't move contests here. I, I don't Okay. We're a contest, right? The, the person who sells the most stuff wins. Yay! And there's like two people out of 30 who could win that. But skill set, ability, determination. Then there's at least six people who will never come close. And those people are like, I don't even care what the contract right. is. They've walked out, right? right? Because it's unachievable. There's two people under the two people who win who think they can win. They don't know that they can. So they're churning like nobody's business. And those are the only two people in the winner 
were motivated by the contest. Everybody else is somewhere in the state where, so the two people who are like three and four, they're like Toddy's mindset. I could win. I'm going to, and they, they push everything to the side and they're churning as hard as they can. And then most everybody else goes, no. And as the month goes on and they get further behind, no. You oh, see yeah. more and more people, no, yeah. no. And then, because that's what people do. But if you were in that top part, maybe if I just do this one more thing, right? And that's, I mean, that's normal. That is what people do. That's how people act. And whether we want to own it or not, oh, maybe. Can I share this? Yeah. Um, I have heard this, um, speaking of perfectionism, I've heard this quote before, and I just was looking it up because I couldn't remember exactly what the words were. And this is actually the quote that I'm aware of was just actually a, a, the last sentence of this whole quote. This is the first time I've ever seen the whole quote. This is from a guy called, um, named John Acuff. It, if anybody you know, oh, yeah. he's an author, and yeah. I think he's like a Christian guy, but I'm not sure. But anyway, his, his quote is, perfectionism is just fear wearing a tuxedo. It masquerades as a character trait as if it's an asset, but it's not. This is the part that I, always sticks in my mind. It's a poison that pretends to be a vitamin. Oh my God, so, Ooh, so yeah, that like gave me chills. Right, so people are like, oh, I'm a perfectionist, and, and look at it as being a yeah. good thing, yeah. and it's, yeah, it's a, it's a poison that pretends to be a vitamin. Yeah, it's like that's weird because yeah. when things aren't perfect, like, I will freak out. So it's like the fear of not having it perfect, <laughs> yeah. Your mind is. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that makes me think of like when I was growing up and I, I, I'm learning to not be this way. But when I was growing up, you know, my mom, three young kids, the house would be a mess and we'd be having company over and she would be running around screaming at us and, you know, put this away, put this away, put this away. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, the place is such a mess when it's like spotless because we just spent two hours crazily cleaning, but she wanted it to be perfect. And anyone that came into our house needed to think that that's how we always lived. And I have a lot of that in me. Give it up with my kids. <laughs> this is, okay, so the, the truth, the myth was having a goal and not fully realizing it is a negative thing. The truth is having a goal and not trying to achieve it is a negative thing. And then here's what I highlighted from eons ago when I read this. One of the secrets to great success is to change your, percep your perspective on failure. You see, everyone experiences failures before they ultimately succeed. Some let their failure, failures stop them. Some keep trying. And then people like Edison Ford, which were some examples that he gave, chose to view failure as a learning experience and build on not as a permanent difference. Fail forward. Yeah, failing forward, exactly. It may sound like double talk, but failure is progress. And if you can see your failure as a point to look back and reflect on, okay, what didn't I do that I should have done? What should, what did I, you know, ask you those, those questions. What can I learn? Yeah, what, what can, can I learn, learn from it? I can't remember who was in here. Someone was in here speaking months ago and they had a list of questions with failure but to learn from it and then you do better going forward um so the answer is not to not have a goal the answer is to write it differently and to use it as the thing that drives you because you're going to get further with the goal than without but you have to frame it that way instead of what i think both you and i tend to want to do if i don't well, reach I it i'm invalid yeah it's april and i don't have you know, 27 deals already done, so whatever. I'm, no I'm giving four up. a month for the next five. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think also when you're setting goals, it's really important. What a lot of people don't do is try to think about what's going to get in their way. And if you, I mean, not that you let those things stop you, but if you anticipate, look, 40 deals, what does that mean from a time perspective? What does that mean from a rest of my life perspective? And you start to making those, you're able to make decisions when you include the possible barriers you might include, right? I mean, there's things you can't control. You were talking about, you can't control the interest rates. What's the point of even worrying about it, right? But that is a barrier in some way. If you anticipate it, you can include ways to combat that or discuss it or to prepare mindsets for it for you. It, it, it just is about taking that extra step 
And always remember, I, I, I love the quote, you know, um, Wayne Gretzky, you miss every shot you don't oh, take. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Or Michael Jordan talking about how many shots he's missed, how many game times he's been trusted to take a game winning shot and failed, how many times they haven't won. And in the end, he says, that is why I, those things, right? Because he has turned that into his attempts in learning and recognizing that, yeah, if you set the goal too high, you're going to burn yourself out. If you set it too low, you're going to achieve it, but not learn anything in the process. Either. And so it's a, it's a, it's always a tough thing, but understanding that when you set it, you are aiming for the stars, but wouldn't you be happy if you landed on the moon? I mean, wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, if, if I told you before the year started, you're going to grow your business 40% this year, would that have been sufficient? I would have said, I, that's not You probably would have thought I was crazy. I would have. Right? Yeah. And you, yeah, you did it. Right? And here's the other thing that's really difficult, and I would always challenge you to do. I like your goal better than hers, by the way. Not that I agree with the number, but I like your goal <laughs> better than hers because there are nine other teams who want to do well, too. That's what. And every one of them is, in their mind, not going to be happy that you pass them or think they did the right thing. Or Comparison is the thief of joy. Set your goals for you. That's an excellent point. And also, Olivia was saying, okay, if you want to be in the top five next year, you need to know what the top five number, the top five teams' numbers were. And they're growing too, because they want to stay in the top five. And I was like, that, that was, that's when the whole, like, well, maybe I'm not even going to try, <laughs> started to creep in. But you're right. It really, I need to focus on, and I want my team to focus on that we do better than last year as far as we grew. It really doesn't matter your ranking. And I let that, I honestly, you guys, I didn't even thought about the top five thing until the, the events date was being, was thrown out there. It hadn't even entered my mind. It wasn't my goal in 2021. It was my goal March 2nd <laughs> when I was like, oh, well, we better, I owe I hope we're in the top, top five. I'd love to be in the top five. And so I let this, this thing that just was like a fluke that I threw out there steal the joy from that day, which was a really awesome day. How so. many people lose the Super Bowl? Right. Everybody but one team. Everybody but one team. And they all signed up that season with the idea that they were going to be number one, except for a few. <laughs> You know, if you're a Viking, so you already know. Say, I think the Vikings are but yeah. you know what I mean? You, you can't you can't judge that that way. If you judge yourself that way, you will always be sad. Yep. Good discussion. Thank you guys. Um, we will touch base about the next several weeks here, but come back because it's going to be the the remind slash golden letters tutorial. So I would recommend, I think Jason would agree with this, bring your computers so that you can be in Remind. Um, and I'm going to be learning right along right. with it. So I'll hop in for my parts, but he's going to run the Remind show. OK, um, so and you're welcome to talk to us, Kelly, about Golden Letters, because I know you've had a lot of success, like how exactly you're doing them. Who comes to this mastermind? Is it set for just a certain percent producer, or anybody well, can come to this? This one is, is open for, for anybody. Okay, so if they're teaching on remind, I could bring some of the new girls with sure. so they can learn. Yes. Okay, it's, this is for everyone. This it, is for everyone? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Are you Sorry. questioning that? No. Okay. No. Yeah. I'm no. Okay. questioning. This is I'm, geared I'm, I'm towards many more people the yes. that like, are yes, looking for growth, more. right? Like you're, okay. you're out of PC and you're you're shooting to okay. be in or you're in the top 20%. But anybody can come. That's why we opened it up to anybody. Okay. Brain. And we want like the more the merrier. The more of you there are, the better discussions we have. It's really great when it's just Megan and Ty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're the regulars. But I love like that you've been here the last couple weeks, Sherry. You've been coming, like keep coming back. It's it I love these discussions. Yeah. Thanks guys. Thank, Thank you. you.